With the Callisto Protocol on the horizon, I feel like now is a good time to be going through some of the background lore that the developers and writers have been so kind enough to present us with in the audiobook series, Helix Station. In this video, we'll be going through how much we have been able to uncover in the backstory of the game's plot, looking at the organizations that have been mentioned and events that have happened in this universe in a timeline format for the information we know about so far. In this universe, the human territories of both Earth and the colonies have been split up into three separate factions. The first is the United Jupiter Security Force. The second is the Syndicate Raiders, who attack certain mining colonies in an effort to steal the precious resources that seem to be dwindling in the societies. And the last is a resistance organization called the Outer Way, which the UJSF labels them as a terrorist faction. However, they talk about the United Jupiter Security Force like they are a tyrannical faction, talking of how they are suffering underneath their rule. The Moon of Callisto is a penal colony, with the prison being called Black Iron Prison. It is said that the security force's elite soldiers are transported to the prison to add further security. However, something later down the line will uncover a hidden truth, but more on this later. In the 23rd century, there existed a ship known only as the Helix Station. It had been designed to hold half a million people at a time. The sheer size of the station is 20 miles long. Its purpose was to be a transport ship, collecting clusters of colonists and civilians to take to other planets for colonization. During this time, Percy, her mother and younger sister had been traveling on board the massive station. However, something that had been alluded to in the fourth episode, something happened to the engines, specifically speaking about the Carpenter Drive, which sounds similar to Dead Space's Shock Point Drive. The Carpenter Drive had gone critical, and due to this, the entire station had been compromised. The robotic guards on board would attempt to bring the people to the extraction zones, so that they could be rescued from this unprecedented disaster. However, the station at this time would be rapidly decaying, with the flood of radiation leaking out of the drive. Decks would be washed over with this high level of radiation, and the people would perish. Only a small percentage of people managed to escape. One of those being Percy, who had been separated, it would seem, from her mother and sister. It is possible in the chaos that the crowds rushing to the shuttle bays would have pushed her back and away from her family, forcing her to watch helplessly as the Helix Station became a tomb within mere minutes. Percy, deeply affected by this tragedy, would vow to herself to never set eyes on this place again. A Jupiter security force would get to the drive and manage to shut it down. However, the entire station was compromised with a high level of radiation lingering in the halls, causing those that had survived to lose their hair and teeth. Now they are condemned to this place to live out the rest of their lives inside the abandoned wreck that was once Helix Station. The robotic guards continue to function inside of the decks with a few glitching out. The teams that had been sent there had been ordered to quarantine the area off with explosive proximity mines to ward off any intruders. The teams possibly had found a black mold growing inside of the decks and had taken samples for further study. Twenty years later, scientists at Black Iron Prison had been experimenting on a microbe which seems to be the black mold found on board the station. Under orders from the security force, they had been experimenting on prisoners to see what its effects would be. It is a high possibility that they had done this in an effort to gain clarity into how it interacts with other organisms, and if there is any way of fighting it back against an infection. However, the scientists find that the microbe has a high reaction to the presence of other organisms, such as humans. As they conduct what seems like an autopsy on a prisoner, one of them begins to lose faith in the project, seeming fatigued from the constant presentations the higher-ups are demanding from them. 
Once one of the scientists, however, has had enough and secretly begins talking to someone who is in league with the Outer Ways, the Resistance group. Together, they plan to talk more on board the ship, the Helix Station. He would take not just his daughter with him, but would take proof of this horrific experiment, the Biophage. This is where he takes care of a guard and cuts off his hand so that he may be able to use the chip buried under the guard's flesh. As the Black Iron ships cannot be piloted by an unauthorized personnel. As all guards possess a chip that allows for them to access and activate terminals, prison cells and the priming of ships for takeoff. These chips are possibly responsible for clocking the guards in and out of their shifts, doing away with key cards. The scientist would flee the moon, Callisto, with his daughter, and heads for the Helix Station with their frozen companion in hopes he might be able to right the wrongs he has committed back there. Once the warden of the prison finds out about this event, he would pick Metzger to lead the mission to find the scientist, to recover the specimen, and to kill anyone else, not essential for the mission's completion. However, the warden would tell him to find a skip tracer that has important information on the Helix Station, Percy. Percy at this time had managed to track a bounty to an undisclosed location where she would begin to suffer a psychosis episode as payment for her survival back inside Helix Station all those years ago. However, as she explores this desolate place, she can see prison cells much like the ones back at the Black Iron Prison. Inside, however, there would not be prisoners but people, people with children, all being trafficked against their will. Their faces are disfigured and they are all starving, looking for any scrap of food. Percy could see that these people were so desperate for food that they had begun to cannibalize themselves. Inside of these prisons, the people had no choice but to defecate on the cell floors. In the following room, however, was the bounty Crowbert, the man responsible for all of this. These people who had dreamed to live, only to be caged up and left there to die in agony until a buyer is interested in them. Percy manages to shoot the man in the knee, causing him to yell out in pain. However, the old saying of quit while you are ahead is wasted on this one, and she agrees that he might just get away from justice, so she gives him her own type of justice the justice of the people trapped inside the cages. She opens the door, allowing the starving, groaning people to slowly move towards Crobert like a pack of zombies. All that could be heard in a matter of minutes had been his screams of pure agony as the sick individual was eaten alive by those he trafficked for his own personal gain. Kane on board the nearby vessel who had been coordinating Percy was upset that she had allowed him to die, that his price was worth a lot more, five times more than his death. The two would argue over the morality of the situation in there, but he would see no point in continuing with her. But he soon helps her with applying her medicine to help with the psychosis episodes, reminding her of the past. They soon see a ship floating nearby to the location with the insignia of Black Iron on their flank. They are ordered to stand down and to power off their weapons, allowing the team entry to the ship, which they allow, at least for the time being. After a rather warm welcome, the two are briefed on why they have been contacted, as the team of three require their ship and their cooperation in order to reach an escaped convict that happens to be the most dangerous criminal alive. Once Percy hears the three words, the Helix Station, she would tell them that she won't be going back there. In a strong tone of voice, she is adamant that she will not be revisiting the past. However, after some convincing, she soon agrees to go, along with Kane advising against such a course of action, but they are settled on the plan, and they soon arrive at the sector the station had been anchored at. The team soon see the proximity mines, the people floating nearby to the station, of which some call them the Cloud of Corpses. 
It is when they further approach the station they are slammed by a proximity mine causing the ship to spiral out of control as it collides with the station. The damages are soon assessed to the engines and the power of the ship has failed. Little note here that this part of the story is reminiscent of the opening to Dead Space, perhaps like a nod to the previous franchise. As the teams head in, they find that the ship is a complete wreck, but Percy tells them that the ventilation shafts will be of use, and so they head inside, only to find the black mold everywhere inside of them. They soon move further until they hear movement up ahead. The figure looked like a rat, however it was far larger as if being mutated by the radiation, and the black mold was present on its fur. The team attempts to move back the way they came, but Percy would be attacked by this rat until she stabs it to death, leaving her with a nasty bite. This is where the rest of the rats would come flooding through the ventilation tube. Another nod to dead space can be seen here with Kane pulling out his plasma cutter to forge a new exit out of the side of the tube. The team escapes the constrictive dangers of the ventilation system and heads towards a new location where Tanaka attempts to hack into a robot to disable its weapons systems. The robot attempts to scan Percy, she tries to get it to identify her. Once she is successful, the robot detects someone trying to hack it and begins firing on the person, Tanaka, which kills her instantly. The team after destroying the robot and mourning Tanaka heads towards the cargo ship, where they find the scientist's body. Tanaka was not the only casualty of the robotic guards. Wesker cuts out a core implant that is used to store all of the prisoners' sights and experiences they have. They then see the shocking truth of who they had been hunting and what had been going on inside the prison on Callisto. Some time later, they find a body of the biophage and the daughter of the scientist, Juniper. Metzger and Prendergast head into another room in order for Prendergast to gain some clarity of the mission. Metzger tells him that the mission was to reclaim the body and to kill the two skip tracers along with the girl. Percy releases Juniper and tells her to go down into the ventilation shaft. Meanwhile, they would confront the two guards but as they draw on each other, the biophage awakens from its slumber, shattering the ice and begins throwing up several black slugs to which Metzger is attacked by them, and one of them had managed to get inside his mouth and down his throat, and it would quickly transform him in a matter of seconds into another biophage. The newly formed biophage attacks and savagely kills Kane, turning him into another biophage. Percy and Prendergast follow Juniper down the ventilation shaft and to the bottom where they find Gamma, a human that has been living in the radiation infested ship, to which they learn later that there are at least 60 more living inside of the Helix station. The man wanders off and they soon meet him again, to which he tries to warn them of a Gamma above them who had eaten one of the slugs that transforms those it infests into biophages. The bio Biophage breaks through the glass above them, which forces the window to land on Prendergast's leg, severing it. Percy attacks and kills the man. She then warns the gummer to tell the others what has happened. The window that had fallen on Prendergast had crushed his leg, forcing Percy to slice his leg off and to cauterize the wound. Percy demands that they leave the station and escape, however Prendergast and Juniper tell her that they wish to stay and stop these creatures from leaving the station. Without Prendergast's chip in his hand, the cargo ship will not function. Percy would tell them that she knows how to destroy the station but doesn't know if she can face her demons. And that is it for the lore and story summary for now. One thing that is more likely to have happened at Helix Station was that Percy was one of the personnel responsible for shutting the drive down and had failed to save those in her care. Perhaps, but we will know more about this in the next episode once it releases. But let me know what you think down below in the comments. Thank you for watching. 
If you enjoyed the video, then please hit it up with a like rating. Sign up to join the British Alliance today by subscribing and ringing in the notification bell so that you are always notified for more content like this when it goes up. A special thank you to all of my channel members for the extra mile support that you go for in this channel. I really appreciate you. And if you would like to become a member today, then hit the join button and see which tiers takes your fancy. And I will see all of you among the cosmos and be sure to have a good one.